How's it going guys? In today's video, we're going to be going over whether it makes more sense to be an Android developer or an iOS developer. And on my channel, if you've been following for the past two years, you will have noticed that I slowly merged from Android to Python to native iOS. And of course, there's also the option of cross-platform, but in this video, we're just going to exclusively be speaking about native Android and native iOS. So personally, the major reason I switched from Android to iOS was because I absolutely hated working in XML and just the architecture and all the deprecation that Google kept on throwing at me became quite annoying, especially as a freelancer. I didn't want to have to continuously read that documentation just to find out that it was switched one week later into something new. So there's a lot of deprecation going on in Google compared to iOS, in my opinion. And that's one of the major reasons I decided to go for iOS instead of Android development. But of course, a really big benefit of deprecation by Google is the fact that you're always going to be relevant as a programmer. You're always going to have to be there to fix a bug because Google's always going to keep on updating it really fast. So companies are always going to need Android developers. While iOS developers, it just feels like the code you build is a bit more robust and lasts a bit longer than in Google. And I guess that's fair enough since they only have one set of iPhone models. You only have to build for one phone type, which is iPhone 13, iPhone 12. They all tend to follow similar specifications. So it's very easy to build apps for iPhone in that respect. Otherwise, if you want to build apps for Android, you'll never know if your phone or my phone or someone else's phone is going to have the same dimensions. I mean, I have a Motorola and the next person might have a Samsung and the next person might have a flip phone, who knows? So it's really hard to make an app that can fit all of these devices perfectly. So you're definitely bound to run into many more bugs than the iPhones. But I must say that if you want to build an app and throw it at the world immediately, definitely go for Android because uploading an app to the Play Store is almost like uploading a video on YouTube. Anybody can do it and it's very simple to do. Plus there's so many people who have Android devices. So chances are that you'll definitely cover a bigger part of the world with Android since it's just much more affordable for everybody. Otherwise, if you're targeting more wealthy countries, then go for iOS. Although it is much, much harder to have an app on the official Apple Store because there's so many requirements. They don't want you to spam. They want to make sure everything's unique and that your code is clean and doesn't and doesn't drain the battery of the iPhones. So I'm just going to simplify this and say that if you don't really have the budget for Apple and your country's mostly into Android phones. You should just do a quick search on that, see what your country is into, what kind of job you want to get. And if that happens to be an Android country that's dominated by Android phones, go for Android. There's so much more flexibility with Android. You can do so much on your phone. There's so much freedom. There's so many companies that require Android. Otherwise, if you just want to target wealthy companies and have an easier time developing for only one device, such as the iPhone 13 or the iPhone X, or an iPad, go for native iOS development. You're going to have to learn a language called Swift, which is very easy and very modern. And after that, you can create cross-platform apps using Swift. And by cross-platform, I mean apps that work for Mac OS, for iPad OS, and for iPhone OS, and so on. Also for Watch OS, of course. So the recent framework for iPhone works for all of those. And I know that recently Android Studio also released something called Jetpack Compose which is something similar to this, and you create your layouts directly in the code, which got rid of the XML, and I'm kind of sad I missed that and jumped into iOS before that happened. But one of these days, I think I'm gonna jump back there and just see what's happening, because these days I'm very curious to see how Android development has progressed since two years. I also have to mention that if you want to become an iPhone developer, you do need to have a MacBook, and you are going to have to buy iOS devices. I mean, of course, on your MacBook, you can run an emulator, but eventually some functionalities you want to test on an actual iPhone. So iPhone development is going to be very expensive to start up with, but in the long run, you're going to get paid very well with it. So the startup cost is nothing compared to your future income. But with that being said, guys, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Feel more than free to leave some questions in the comment section down below. I covered just the bare essentials of what I've been through and what I think is best. And hopefully that helped you guys decide on what you should do. And my final recommendation is that you try out both just to make sure that you are on the right path and that you like what you're doing. That's the most important step to becoming really successful. 
because of course if you enjoy what you're doing you're going to spend more time and put more energy into what you're creating and that just makes everything more pleasant for everyone but as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video